Yoda and Asajj Ventress start a little competition to see who Toydaria will side with in the war. We watched Ambush for our Clone Wars chronological rewatch, so now it's time to break it all down. The King of Toydaria arrives on a neutral moon to meet with Yoda, but the Separatists have caught wind of the meeting and ambush the Republic ship, hoping to coerce the Toydarians into joining their cause. Yoda and three clones reach the moon in an escape pod, and Asajj Ventress proposes a competition. If Yoda can fight his way through the battle droids, proving them to be inferior soldiers, she will bow out of negotiations. The Jedi Master agrees and begins his journey with the clones. They fight through a number of droids, but one of them is wounded and their supplies begin to run dangerously low. Yoda inspires each of them to look within for comfort. He points out that while they may share the same face, they each have unique strengths to offer the team. They cleverly defeat the next and final wave of droids and arrive at the meeting. The King of Toydaria agrees to join the Republic and Asajj flees after failing to assassinate him. So the theme of this episode is great leaders inspire greatness in others. And I think that was shown pretty obviously through the story. Yeah, Yoda's scene in the cave with the clones would be the most obvious part. He's got kind of a Wizard of Oz thing going <laughs> where he's like, you had teamwork inside of you all along and you had cleverness. <laughs> you had a brain. <laughs> yeah, I love that scene and the way that he speaks to the clones and gives them hope. And he even says that they can tap into the force, kind of calm their minds or something like that. Yeah, he was like, find peace in the force. And he says that they can use the force to find peace. Uh, very interesting because it opens up the question, like, can clones be force sensitive? Mm -hmm. I think that, yes, I think it's harder for them because, well, A, they grow twice as fast. Right. Uh, but their, their training doesn't lend itself well to Jedi teachings, I would say, or even force philosophy. Yeah. It's not about peace of mind. It's about go, 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 kill, kill, kill. So yeah. I think it's difficult, but probably possible. But beyond being force sensitive, potentially, I think it's interesting that Yoda says that while they all have the same face, they have unique signatures in the force. The force views them as individual beings that matter. And mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. I also really liked just... The music. It was a really nice use of Yoda's theme in that moment. Just a great Yoda episode all around. Yeah, those clones are lucky to have gotten a personal pep talk by <laughs> Grandmaster Yoda. Right, I hope they made it to the end of the war. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about one of them in a little bit, but I, I hope that the other two went and like lived long, healthy lives. <laughs> yes. But then, so we've got Yoda over here giving them like a rousing speech, and then We've got Asajj and Dooku, who are just like barking orders at the droids. Yeah, they treat them as expendable, which on one hand, they're droids, they're manufactured and they are. But I think that we need to discuss this because the droids show a level of sentience in I, there. I really noticed that in this episode, and it might be because we did the droid sentience panel at Dragon Con, but... Yeah, like the, the droids towards the beginning of the episode are kind of bickering and one of them's like, oh, I can get through this, no problem. And he kind of like goes off on his own. And I don't know, at one point, another one says something about blaming his programming and like insinuating that he could be a better soldier if it weren't for his, whoever programmed him. So I thought that was interesting. They show a lot of independent thought. They don't just blindly follow orders. They show fear mm -hmm. at one point. So yeah, it's like, are these minds really expendable? And ultimately, I think that the purpose of the droids is to be comedic relief for a kid's show. But I think it's a discussion worth having. And I think that they meant for us to see Yoda and Asajj and compare them as leaders because the droids call her Supreme Leader three times in the episode. And then, of course, we were like, oh, Supreme Leader, Asajj is Snoke. We figured it out. We've done it. Before closing out, let's go over some of the random pieces of trivia from the episode. The targeting display screen for the Republic frigate appears to have the same Corellian design as the grid seen on the Millennium Falcon. The Arabesh legend at the bottom of Thyre's macro binocular viewplate reads infrared mode. The top reads regular mode. While Jack and Reese never appear again in Star Wars, Thyre shows up in Revenge of the Sith, sadly as one of the clones searching to confirm Yoda's death after his duel with Palpatine. The little creature that perches on Yoda's finger is a baby Nibre. Those creatures pop up throughout the series, but more recently surrounded AP5 during his musical interlude in Star Wars Rebels. 
The script for this episode had a different message at the start that read, Great leadership comes in all sizes. You can also find these facts on StarWars.com's episode guides, and they're currently doing a chronological rewatch on their website as well if you want to check that out. I'll put a link in the description of all the episodes listed out chronologically. But that's it for today. Next week, we'll cover Season 1, Episode 2, Rising Malevolence, if you want to watch along. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.